Greetings, welcome to Faith this morning and those who are with us online. Uh, so glad you are here today. Uh, the order of service is as printed in the bulletin. All the hymns are in the hymnals. We encourage you to fill out a pew card when you come to church and place it in the offering plate at the back. Following the service today, we will have refreshments and then Sunday school and adult Bible class for all ages. The entrance song. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. You're renowned, O Lord, throughout all the ages. Who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. You're renowned, O Lord, throughout all the ages. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. You're renowned, O Lord, throughout all the ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins has a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. No. Everlasting Father, source of every blessing, mercifully direct and govern us by your Holy Spirit that we may complete the works you have prepared for us to do. <coughs> Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading from God's Word for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Numbers, chapter 11. Now the rabble was among them ha had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in G Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up. There's nothing at all but this manna at to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight, that you, may, that you lay the burden of all these people, all this people on me? Did I, did I conceive all these all this people? Did I give them birth? that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. And I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight that I may not see, see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of, of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of the meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to, them, spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. As, as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named El Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit re rested on them. They were, then the, they were among those that registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man, a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle reading is from James chapter 5. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith will save one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, con confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with, with a nature like ours, and he, pray, he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, someone brings him back. Let him know that whoever brings him back, a sinner from his wanderings, will save his soul from death, and will have and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. 
But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I invite the children forward for children's message this morning. today. Good. I wanted to talk to you about books today. Do you all have a favorite book? What's your about tornadoes? Okay. That and dinosaurs. It teaches you about those things, doesn't it? Yeah. AJ, do you have a book you like that mom or dad or grandma and grandpa read to you? Is it about truck? A story? story? Uh huh. Is it about trucks? Um, Okay. Well, good. Well, when I was growing up, I had some favorite books, so I'm going to show them to you. Got to get them out here. My one favorite book was called. The Pokey Little Puppy. It's all about a puppy dog. And then my next favorite was about Bambi. You ever read Bambi or had anybody read to you about Bambi? Yeah. Yeah, the movie's good too. And my favorite was Cinderella. I liked that story a lot. But when my kids were growing up, one of the favorite things I had to read to them was nursery tales. And it's got all kinds of stories in here, and I bet you had somebody read them to you, like Jack and the Beanstalk, or Little Red Riding Hood, or Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's a lot of fun to read those stories, and my kids love them so much. But you know what the greatest book of all was? Noah, you know what the greatest book of all? No, it's the Bible, God's Word. It's all about God who created the whole world and is the one true God, and that he loved us so much he gave us his son Jesus to save us. And when you're growing up, you can have a children's Bible like this. And it usually tells a story in language that you can understand and has pictures in it. And then when you're older, you can read regular Bible like this. 
but it's really good if you have mom and dad read you some stories out of the Bible when you're little, because it is the greatest book ever. So shall we say a prayer? Dear God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for giving us Jesus, who saves us from our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks, everybody. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen first to Proverbs chapter 6. A scoundrel and villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks with his eye, signals with his feet, and motions with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart, he always stirs up dissension. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among his brothers. That's the word of the Lord. Jesus also speaks in our gospel reading today, Mark chapter 9, about the sins of hand and foot and eye. And last week, James talked about the sins of of the tongue. No man can control his tongue. 
It is like a roaring fire. So what are the sins of our hands? Doesn't take too much thinking, although we generally want to move on and think less about our sins than we ought. What are the sins of the hand? Murder, bloodshed, hurting or harming our neighbor. There's the sin of the hand tipping back another drink or popping another pill to dull and numb the pain of life. The sins of our hands that are used to serve ourselves. There's the sins of our feet when we go where we don't belong and use our feet to do what we ought not do. There's the sins of our eyes, lust and envy and greed and desire. There's an ancient picture of the eyes with hands coming out of the eye sockets. And that was to depict envy the grabbing of something with the eye, something that belongs to someone else. And how about our tongues, especially when it comes to children? How do we cause children to sin with our tongues? How about when we tell lies in the front seat of the car while we're on the phone and our children can hear and they learn to lie? From us. How about when we use our tongues to teach our children to devalue others? To teach our children that other people are worth less than we are because of what they have or don't have, or how they look, or the color of their skin? How about when we teach our children to care for themselves only and use our tongue to say things like, no matter what, I just want you to be happy. That teaching is in direct contradiction to the teaching of Jesus. Jesus says in Mark's Gospel, particularly, he who saves his life will lose it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and, let you, let ye, and yet lose his own soul? Whoever who loses his life for my sake We'll find it. We ought not use our tongues to teach our children to do whatever makes them happy. We should use our tongues to teach our children to be faithful, to listen to Jesus, to follow what he says, to hear him. That's their only hope. There's a whole bunch of people who are spending all their lives trying to be happy and not succeeding. We use our tongues and our eyes and our feet and our hands to sin, to sin against ourselves and to sin against our children. We use our eye and hand and tongue when we teach our children that baptism doesn't matter, that they do not need to be forgiven of their sins, that they can grow up and choose whatever faith they would like, that's such a great disservice because we're withholding from them the promise of life that Jesus gives. I'm sure that you can think of plenty of other sins that you've committed with your hands and with your feet and with your eyes and with your tongue. If you can't think of any, try a little harder because there is no sense in being dishonest with ourselves or being dishonest before the Lord. That won't do us any hope. But there is some good news, and that is in our first hymn this morning, the second stanza of Shepherd of Tender Youth, we sang, You are the Holy Lord, O all-subduing word, healer of strife, yourself you did abase, that from sin, sin's deep disgrace, you might save our race and give us life.
you did yourself debase, abase. Jesus, you know, did not sin with hand and eye and foot and tongue, but rather he stretched out his hands and feet and used them to drag his cross up to Mount Calvary where he was crucified. He did not cut off hand and foot and eye, but hand and foot were nailed to the cross where he bore the wrath of God for us in our place. And with his eyes, he looked at every sinner that has ever been born and every sinner that will be born. With his eyes, he looked at you and he looked at me. And with his tongue, he said, Father, forgive them. And with his tongue, he said, it is finished. That's the good news, the very good news, that Jesus took our place. Jesus gave his hand and foot and eye and tongue for our sinful hand and foot and eye and tongue. And you and I have been baptized. That is, hand and foot and eye and tongue have been drowned in the waters of holy baptism and hand and eye and foot and tongue have been given back to us, redeemed and forgiven. And so now hand and foot and eye and tongue are forgiven hand and forgiven foot and forgiven eye and forgiven tongue. And we use those hands and eyes and tongues to bring a child to holy baptism that they too would be with us as God's forgiven children. We use our hands to hold a hymnal and a Bible before the eyes of our children to teach them how to sing and to pray and to believe in Jesus. We use our hand and eye and foot to bring a child to Sunday school. We use our eyes to see suffering and to be useful and to be used by God to help those who are in need. We use our eye and hand and foot to get in our car and drive to Atterbury to help refugees or drive to Louisiana and help the homeless to rebuild. Or just to drive across town to help a friend or neighbor in need. Actually, if we were following the command and guidance of Jesus, we would drive across town to help our enemy to repair their home and their life, to help them to rebuild what is broken. We would use our hand and eye and foot and tongue to fight injustice and to help those who are in need. And we would use our tongue to confess the faith to sing the gospel to one another and to teach every child about the love of God and the forgiveness of Christ, to tell them of the place that they have with the Lord. I invite you to take a look at the back page of your bulletin this morning and you'll see a picture and I don't know if you've ever noticed that but when you leave or come in, on the above the ramp are these names. Given to the glory of God by the Schneer, Schneers, the Poors, Mabel Supercroup, Faith Families, and Friends of Faith. In 2006, when the entryway was expanded and the ramp was put on, that testament was painted there. It was painted there to give recognition to those individuals who had contributed generously in their estates to faith. The gifts that were given by those three individuals were the bulk of the funds that were used to put the ramp in. The ramp that allows people to come into church 
who cannot use steps. The ramp that allows us to roll caskets in and out of church when we lay to rest the saints of Christ who are buried from this nave. Those names are people you probably don't know. I did never met any of them. But they gave of themselves so that others would benefit from what they were given. And so now for the last 15 years, that piece of real estate, that piece of the property out there has served that benefit. Every time you drive in and it's raining and you can get out of your car under a covered driveway, it is thanks to the Schneers, the Poors, and Mabel Subercrew, and all those who contributed. They gave when they could not benefit from it anymore. And I would challenge you as you think about next Sunday when we will have Commitment Sunday for the building project to think about how is it that you can give of what you have been given for this generation and for the next. What you may be able to do by what God has given you to benefit the child who will hear of Jesus to the family that will celebrate a funeral luncheon, to a couple who celebrates their wedding, for the preschool students as they celebrate their graduation from preschool in that space, for every time someone uses the bathroom and washes their hands, that they are benefiting from what you have given to make it a better place and more useful for service of the gospel. We do not do it for ourselves. We do it for others. Hand, eye, foot, and tongue in service to our neighbor, forgiven by Jesus, for him and for his kingdom and for this community. In his most holy name, amen. Please stand to confess our faith. We confess with the whole Christian church on earth, using the words of the Nicene Creed on the inside back cover of the hymnal, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uh, in our prayers this morning, we give thanks to God also for Elsie Catherine Vogt, uh, who was born to Jonathan and Avery yesterday. Um, Elsie is the great-granddaughter of Margie and Ken Vogt, and she joins her cousin, Gregory Philip Vogt, who was born this past week. So we give thanks to God for healthy delivery for both of those moms. Uh, those are both Kevin Boat's uh, grandchildren. Also, we give prayers, we ask for prayers, we ask for healing from God for Kim Buchanan um, also this morning. 
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, keep us from craving and weeping after what we no longer possess, but instead give us contentment in the daily bread you so graciously rain down upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cause your Holy Spirit to rest upon us and our pastors, that we may prophesy your word publicly and faithfully among us, and we, in turn, may prophesy your word in our homes and vocations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, bless our elders and church council with the necessary gifts of your spirit, that, we may, that they may faithfully serve the, con the congregation, support our pastors, and uphold the ministry of the word among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send forth your spirit, Father, over all couples who desire the gift of children, that they may be fruitful and bring up their children in your fear and knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For President Biden, and all rulers that sin and wickedness may be kept at bay, and we may live peaceably, peace, peaceably lives in security. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For victims of earthquakes and hurricanes, fires, violence, war, and bloodshed, that the Lord God would strengthen them and heal them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Gregory and Elsie, with thanksgiving to God for a healthy birth. For Wendy and Zane, Laurel, Hunter, and Chris, Harrison and Susan, and all who celebrate their birth, that the Lord God would grant them each and every day in his grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and raise up those who are suffering or sick, especially Annette and Ben, Bill, Charles, and Walburga, Charlotte, Connie, and family, Dick, Dorothy, and Jim, Johanna and Jonathan, Judy, Justin, and Karen, Kate, Kim, Kimberly and Kimberly Joe, Marcia, Margie, Mark and Nick, Paige, Pat and Phil, Roy, Ryan, Terry, Tim and Diana, Tim and Lynette, and all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, Lord, that all who come to the altar today to receive the heavenly manna of Christ's body and blood will be well salted with repentance and faith and at peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements. Uh, of course, the first most important announcement today is a reminder that next Sunday is the church picnic. And I say this every year, every time, but it still happens. There's nothing here next Sunday. Everything is at Camp Lakeview next Sunday, so don't show up here at Faith. Um, the, or, the service is at 10 o'clock next Sunday, so you get an extra hour to sleep in, but you have a drive. So um, the information about the picnic is in the bulletin. And a couple of notes about safety. So the amphitheater is very large and spread out outdoors. And the food will be served in the dining hall, but the food will be spread out in the various corners of the room with different stations. So you're not waiting in line behind somebody to serve. You just kind of go station to station, spread out. The elders will be masked and gloved and will serve, uh, you know, so we're not all handling the spoons and things like that. So that's a good... Uh, precaution that we are taking. Also, you're welcome to bring your own picnic chair or blanket and sit outside. Um, there is, there are some picnic tables out and around. Um, we will also have bingo in the um, screened-in porch. So that's a, a large area with screened-in porch for bingo and jokes. And then also there's zip lining out there, and that's right across from the dining hall. All the information is on the the sheet. We did this two years ago and it was a wonderful time and so we hope that you will join us. Um, the tickets are a free will donation. The main point of getting a ticket is so that we have enough food out there. Um, the elders met yesterday to pull the pork and I have to tell you that pork is absolutely phenomenally delicious so you'll want to be uh, enjoying that as well next week. Um, driving directions are on there. 
If you feel like you're not confident to drive down there, please call the office this week and we'll arrange a driver that can meet with you and bring you down. Um, and then also the pitch in uh, is by alphabet. So if you want to follow that, if you don't want to follow that, then just bring whatever you want and everybody will be enjoying that as well. If you have any questions about the picnic, uh, please ask one of the elders or myself. Also, next Sunday will be Celebration Sunday, where we are asked to bring back our pledge cards for the building project. So if you've already given to the building project, don't write that on the card because that has already been given. The pledge cards are for gifts that you intend to give in the next three years. And the purpose of that is so that we know what we can work with if we're going to be able to do it or not. So please bring those to the picnic. If you're not coming to the picnic, please mail those in uh, this week so that we can have a pretty good uh, understanding of where we are at. Also, the men's and women's Bible study has resumed. It resumed last week. The study guide is underneath the TV. Um, each of those sessions stands on their own, so if you can only come to one, that's fine. The study guide tells you which pages to prepare. It's one of those studies where you prepare ahead uh, for the session. Also, please note in your bulletin the donations that are needed for ongoing outreach. So the Brown County Backpack Program continues, and we are the church that provides Jello cups and fruit cups. Um, the Love Chapel and Homeless Shelter in Brown County continually always need food items. The Clarity Pregnancy Center needs various items as listed and the Afghan Family Resettlement at Camp Atterbury also needs many things. There's information out front for that project. With that, we continue with our offertory hymn, Lord Whose Love, number 848.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks for grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as we drink it. You drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reminder that following the service, we have refreshments and then Sunday school for the children and Bible class for the adults. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.